Hello Gators, welcome back and happy Monday. Uh, thank you for logging on to those Google Classrooms, being with us here today, ready to mark and review those knowledge checks. So, please bring those knowledge checks out in front of you. Uh, we are going and marking and reviewing knowledge check three today in a little bit different way. I have a whiteboard here in front of me. In a second, I'm gonna be tilting that camera down so that you can kind of see the questions as I go through them. After you've marked your question, if you need to, you can make any corrections to it. So, that being said, let's get started. Take out those knowledge checks, take out a pen to mark it with. Here we go. So as I was just saying, here's what that whiteboard looks like. This is what we're gonna be using today to go through, mark and review knowledge check three. So question 1A. It asks us to write each mixed number as an improper fraction in simplest form. Well, let's look at the first one. We have two wholes and four over nine. So going back to last week on Wednesday with how to do this question, I'm going to use the method that we've kind of used earlier this year as well, and that's using multiplication and addition. So we need to start by looking at our two wholes and multiplying that by our denominator nine. So two multiplied by nine and then adding our numerator, which is four. So going through that, two multiplied by nine is 18, plus four is 22. So your answer is 22 becomes your numerator, and what's your denominator? Keep the nine. Slide that denominator over. Okay, so going back, we took two, multiplied by nine, added our numerator, which was four, and got our end result, which is our improper fraction of 22 over nine. Why is this an improper fraction? Because our numerator is bigger than our denominator. There's your first mark. 1B, we have five and five over eight. So five and five eighths. So going through here. We're going to do the same thing, multiply five by eight, which is 40, plus five is 45. So your numerator becomes 45, your denominator stays as it is, eight. There's your second mark. 1C. We have seven and two over four. So looking at this, 7 multiplied by our denominator of 4, so 7 times 4 is 28, plus 2 is 30. Over, keep our denominator the same as 4. I'm just going to pause for a sec there though, because the second part of this question says in simplest form. So why I didn't do anything to these fractions in the end is because there is not a number that can go into 22 and into nine. This fraction is already in its simplest form. Same thing here. There is not a number that is divisible into 45 and into eight. This fraction is already in its simplest form. This one here though, there is a number that can go into both 30 and into four. So going back to the start of our year, thinking of our divisibility rules, I'm gonna start with a lower number, I'm gonna start with two. So I know that two can go into 30 and two can go into four. Let's see how many times. So divide both by two, because whatever we do to the top, we can do to the bottom. 30 divided by two is 15, and four divided by two is two. So final answer there is 15 over two. Looking back at this, that's how you're getting your full mark there for one C. If you did this and you left it as 30 over four, give yourself a half a mark for that question. One D, last one here in one, we have three, and two over six. So three multiplied by six is 18, plus my two is 20. We have 20 over top of, keep our denominator the same as six. Once again, there is some number, there is a number that we can divide both into 20 and into six. This is not reduced yet. So what's a number that can go into both 20 and into six? We'll start with dividing by two. 20 divided by two is 10. Six divided by two is three. So final answer there, 10 over three. 
Once again, if you had it here and you didn't kind of finish and put it in the simplest form, give yourself a half mark there. So your total in one for A, B, C, and D is a mark out of four. Okay, question number two. This time it asks us to write each improper fraction as a mixed number in simplest form. So difference here is instead of going from a mixed number to an improper fraction, we're not going the other way. We're going to go an improper fraction to a mixed number. So what it looks like to a, we have 19 over nine. So why this is an improper fraction again is the numerator is bigger than your denominator. So we got to ask ourselves first, how many times does nine go into 19 without going over? How many whole numbers are in there? Well, nine goes into 19 two times without going over. Think of it this way. Think of it as counting by nines, nine, 18. So it goes in twice without going over. What's left over between 18 and 19 is one. So what's left over is your numerator one. Your denominator stays the same as nine. So your new fraction, an improper fraction to a mixed number is two and one over nine. There's two A. Two B. We have 23 over eight. So once again, ask yourselves, how many times can eight go into 23 without going over, without being too many? So counting up by eights, eight, 16, if we go 24, which would be next in the multiples of eight, that would be too many. So we got to pause at 16. So think of eight, 16, so that's twice. What's left over between 16 and 23 is seven. And keep your denominator the same as eight. So there's your answer for two B. Two C. We have 11 over four. Ask yourselves, how many times does four go into 11 without going over? So counting up multiples of four, four, eight, goes in twice. What's left over between an eight and an 11? Well, left over, the difference between 11 and eight is three over top of our fraction, sorry, our denominator four to make our fraction our mixed number two and three over four and last one two d try to write this a little bit bigger so you can still see it at the bottom here we have 21 over top of six so ask yourselves how many times does six go into 21 without going over so let's count multiples of six six 12 18 and if we counted one more, it would be 24, so that would be too many. So let's go back, six, 12, 18. That's three times. What's left over between 18 and 21? Well, that's three over denominator six. So notice here, and what some of you might have noticed there, is that this fraction three over six can be reduced to simplest form. That's the only one out of all of these. So three over six can, can be reduced because there's a number that goes into both three and six. That number here is three. So three divided by three is one. Six divided by three is two. It's a half. Three out of six is the same as one half because three is half of six. So is this our final answer? No, not quite. We didn't do anything with our whole number, so we just move that over we still have three holes and a half. It's just a different way of writing this over here to this here. Okay, there's also a mark. So your total in number two, just like a number one, is out of 